Today on Zero to Awesome, we are celebrating the one year, two month, and four day anniversary of installing my four post lift because that's a significant amount of time that is regularly celebrated when you have a four post lift, I think. And so to celebrate that amount of time, today we're gonna to be talking about what life with the four post lift has been like for the past year. I've also gotten a number of questions about it over the past year, so we'll be answering those too. But to start, let's take a look at what this lift has lifted over the past year, two months, four days. So the lift has generally been great over the past year. It's done everything I've asked it to. It's lifted everything I've asked it to. It's allowed us to drop three transmissions out of different cars. Uh, well, actually twice on my dad's 911, once on this Bel Air. Done oil pan on this. I did the oil pan on the Nissan Xterra. There's, we did oil change, radiator, everything on my brother's Jeep. There's been a lot of work that has gone on on this lift, which is probably why my garage floor is so stained and will never be the same again. But it's been great for storing cars. It's also been great for working on cars. Maybe my one biggest complaint isn't about the lift itself, it's about me being lazy, and that's I don't drive the Bel Air as much as I used to. And I think that's just a function of it being up on the lift, the Corvette being underneath it typically. So if I wanna get it down, I have to move the Corvette out, lower it down, put the ramps on, get the Bel Air out, and then what do you do with the Corvette? Put it back on the lift? No, it doesn't go on the lift. You gotta put it somewhere else. But that is neither here nor there. That is a Steven problem, and Steven's just being lazy. So the biggest question I get about this lift is not actually about the lift, it's about my garage. And the question is, how tall is my garage? So from the very bottom here, where the lift sits, all the way up to the ceiling, it is 10 foot four inches. And so that's enough room for the 55 here to sit on top of the Corvette that's normally in here. And you still got a couple more inches up there, but you do need those because to get the lift down, you have to go up to release the safety latches and then let everything down. Another question I get is why did you go with the Atlas lift? And so this, well, we replaced their logo there, just, you know, kind of had to do that, but Atlas, this is Atlas 408 SL, and I went with them for really one big reason, and that is the, the distributor that I bought this from is within 30 minutes of my house. And you also got a discount for local pickup. And someone recently asked about that. I think I told them the wrong thing. I went back and looked, and it was about a $300 discount for picking the lift up locally and not having it shipped to you, even though freight is included. But the distributor near me was Greg Smith Equipment. They have a couple locations throughout the US. And one of the reasons I wanted to pick up the lift is because if you get it delivered, you have to have a forklift to unload it. And I do not have a forklift at my house. So picking it up, got it cheaper. Also was able to unload it from the trailer on my own time, which was great. And we get it all set up and in here. And the reason I went with the 408 SL lift as opposed to their other lifts is just, you get some, some thicker beams here and it hides all the cabling inside the rail so you don't see that going on it just it looks a little bit nicer and theoretically it's a little bit safer because you have thicker poles these aren't really sharp edges on on here but if you uh if you clip your mirror on it it can take some paint off which i discovered with the corvette which was not the most fun i did repaint the mirror so we're all good there but what i wound up doing is this is this black stuff here is door edge trim like you get from an auto parts store it goes on the edge of your car door so if you open your door into a, I don't know, a wall, another car, whatever, it protects the edge of your door, but it also hopefully prevents against paint scratches on your car if you rub up against it. So that was 
probably the first improvement I made to the lift. Another improvement was adding LED lights to underneath so you can see what you're working on when you're under there. So these have worked out okay. They're not really the brightest. And maybe one mistake I made is I bought color changing LEDs. So these are white right now, but they don't really look bright white. You get, you get all three colors, red, green, and blue that make up the quote white light. So you can have a, you can have a color changing party while you're working under your car, but it may not be the brightest party. So one thing I may do is either get a second strip of lit lights or I'm thinking if I just get plain white LEDs and not color changing LEDs, they may be a little bit brighter. So I'll probably do one of those soon. And so to get those in there, all they are, they're, they're stick down LEDs. They go all the way from the front to the back, wired them up back here, earn it down the wire loom for the hydraulic line. Controllers over here, plug goes down and out to wherever it plugs in. Another kind of complaint I have about the lift really isn't the lift itself. It's actually this jack that did not come with the lift. And so I don't actually know which jack this is. It looks a lot like the RJ35 lift that Greg Smith sells. And it has these nylon casters here that allow you to slide it along the ramps. It's not wheeled. It doesn't have wheels on there. There's another one they have that's the RJ45 lift, which does have wheels. And so I may, I've been thinking about trying to contact them because they sell replacement parts and ask if you can get the parts to put wheels on these instead of using these nylon casters because maybe I can show you here. Whenever you push this thing, it takes a little bit of effort to get it moving and the, the lift kind of shakes a little bit. So it may not be the safest. Once you get the jack to the right position though, it does work really good. These slide out, you have extensions over there for SUVs and Whenever I was working on the lift on the Cerritera, it was really helpful to be able to go up and down, up and down real easy and not have to worry about cranking individual jacks on each side. Another lift improvement that really isn't a lift improvement that I've made is this, I guess it's called a safety mirror or something right here. Because when you're in a car backing it up on the lift, you can't really see the driveway. So I got this mirror here. So, you know, you're in the driver's seat right here. You can look out here, see if you're on the ramp, if you're going to go off the ramp. It's been great. So another, I don't know if it's really a problem with this lift, this is the way it was designed, but it's this lock release lever here. So you gotta make sure you have it all the way down when you're going down. If you don't have it all the way down and it's a little bit up like this, one of the latches will catch and it'll be going down, one, one corner will catch and it'll throw everything off level and that would be bad. It could send your car careening off the edge. And similarly, whenever you wanna get it down, on the locks, it's to make sure this lever is all the way up because otherwise, again, one of the lashes could miss and one side could keep going down when everything else catches. But as long as you know what you're doing, it's not bad. Another question I get sometimes is, have I been able to get the Corvette up there? So in, I think my first review video about the lift, I couldn't get the Corvette up there. And that may just be because of the way my driveway is and this dip right here. But I eventually got tired of changing the Corvette's oil on the ground. So the other day I broke down and I ordered these extended aluminum ramps from Atlas. And so these go over here, I'll show you in a second, where the regular ramps typically go. And they're just a little bit longer. So this is the standard steel ramp that comes with a lift. This is their extended aluminum ramp. It's not really that much longer, maybe six inches there. But as you can see, I still have the problem with this dip in my driveway right here. So what I'm gonna do is I have, I think this is a two by 10 here. I'm gonna take this, put it underneath the ramp, cut it to size and then bolt it down so it doesn't come flying out whenever I try and get the Corvette up there. So we're gonna do that right now. Modify this ramp a little bit with this piece of wood, 
and then see if we can finally get that guy up on the lift. So we have a slight problem with our original plan. Before I cut these, I went back and looked at my last lift video to make sure one board coming out was gonna be enough. And it's not. The Corvus tires were like right here whenever it wouldn't go up in the lift. So we need two boards to bridge the gap. Only problem with that is if I don't secure these down and we're going on a straight, the drive wheels could kick the boards out and the Corvette falls down, smashes itself on the lift. That would be bad. So what I need to do is probably join these together and then secure them to the ramp so they don't slide out. Only problem is that takes time and this is YouTube so we need results now. So what we're gonna do is back the Corvette up and that way the drive wheels will be up on the ramp, front wheels will, if anything, they'll push the boards towards this lip right here and then they won't go anywhere and then we're not gonna risk falling on the ground. And we'll see if he can get up on the lift. So that did it. I think the ramp kicked up a little bit here as I was going on, but apart from that, it worked. That means we can now get underneath the Corvette and do fun Corvette things under here. Like we can see where I hit something in the road and it messed up this right here and where it bent this right here. Let's get around to fixing those. Oh, I took out a chunk of something right here too. I wonder what I hit. You can see where all my speed bumps at work hit the bottom of the car. That's fun. So I don't know if that was really the ramps that helped out. I think it was these pieces of wood. So I probably didn't really need the aluminum ramps, but they are significantly lighter than the steel ramps, which is great. Those steel ramps are a pain to get in and out. And now that it's easier, maybe I'll drive the Bel Air more. Who knows? So that's it for now. Hope you enjoyed the update on the lift. Remember to like and subscribe. And if you have any more questions about the lift, leave them in the comments down below because we do typically get back to our commenters because we don't have that many. So, you know, until next time, just remember with a little bit of added length, anything's possible. See you later. Guys, it's, it's actually kind of high up here.